George, 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 you've done it again, my man. You continue to stick your foot in your mouth, you continue to make mistakes, and you continue to hurt your confidence. And you continue to make the Big 12 and Brett Yormark look even better. Why do I say this? Pull up a chair, sit back, relax, and I'll tell you. What is up, college sports fans, Big 12 fans, and fellow members of Mountaineer Nation? This is Coos. Welcome in to another edition of Coos's Corner. Pull up that chair or grab a bar stool and let me serve you up this shot of top shelf college football content. In today's episode, give you an update on the Pac-12 TV negotiations, the latest news about George Klyvkoff, and why he's continuing to make Brett Yulmark look like a superstar. What I want to do first is share an article with you. It comes from The Athletic. It says, what we're hearing on Pac-12 expansion, SMU, the Big 12, and more. Here's the latest. Last July, shortly after USC and UCLA's defections, the Pac-12 opened negotiations for its next media rights contract, which will take effect with the 2024 football season. Seven months later, there's still no deal, and people are getting antsy with good reason. Three people with knowledge of the discussions said Commissioner George Klyovkov is struggling to find partners willing to pay close to what the league is seeking. Two of those sources said Klyovkov overpromised his members on how many bidders there would be and what dollar amount they could command a target north of $40 million per school, according to one league athletic director. Today, it's uncertain whether the Pac-12 will even be able to exceed the $31.6 million average. The Big 12 reportedly landed in a six-year extension with ESPN and Fox it reached last fall. We don't have a deal because it hasn't been good, said the AD. I'm going to say that again, folks. This is coming from an AD in the Pac-12. They don't have a deal because it hasn't been good. Klavkoff made some key miscalculations. At last summer's Pac-12 Media Day, he suggested the Big Ten's pending jackpot would have a ripple effect on the Pac-12. But the Big Ten is a much more watched conference that garnered interest from nearly every major linear and digital media company. The Pac-12, by contrast, has found fewer bidders since going to the open market. Fox, for one, has expressed little interest now that the Los Angeles schools are part of its prized Big Ten package, and CBS who already has the Big Ten in the Mountain West, and NBC, who's got the Big Ten in Notre Dame, are set in college football for the next several years. However, one Pac-12 administrator did indicate a new player emerged shortly after the new year. Klavkov also sounded certain last summer that his league would be next in line after the Big Ten because its deal was up a year earlier than the Big 12s. But Big 12 counterpart Brett Yormark outflanked him, convincing existing partners ESPN and Fox to open up negotiations a year early, whereas Klyovkov drew out the process by taking his rights to market. Your mark reached an extension of the current contract within a couple of months, and the Big 12 agreement may have provided its own ripple effect on negotiations by unofficially suggesting a ceiling or setting a ceiling. It's tough when you're, and here's another quote, it's tough when your neighbor across the street sells his house for a low price, said the Pac-12 administrator. ESPN remains interested in the Pac-12, particularly in the league's 10.30 p.m. Eastern Time games, but New York Post sports media writer Andrew Marchand reported last fall that the Pac-12 and ESPN were hundreds of millions apart, which may explain why the Pac-12 is looking at possibly putting the majority of its games on a streaming platform. Sports Business Journal's John Irand said the league will sell almost its entire media package to Amazon for a price that is slightly higher than what the Big 12 gets from ESPN and Fox. But, you know, but guys, I've read in other reports, and you've probably seen it too, there are many members of the Pac-12 that aren't happy giving up the exposure of getting off a linear cable and going over to a streaming network, to a streaming service, because streaming has not yet overtaken linear cable as the most popular TV outlets. And until they do, these, these teams want to be on linear cable. Now, this goes on to talk about expansion, which I'll get, I actually plan on touching on in a separate video. But it talks about Brett Yulmark has visited with SMU there and and whatnot. But basically what I want to focus on here is is what's going on with Klyovkov. He's overpromised. He basically told his members, his conference members, that they were going to get a much better deal than what they're actually being able to get. But I'm sure he didn't have in, I'm sure he had no idea and probably did not think in his, in a thousand years, that Brett Yormark and the Big 12 would jump in line ahead of him. I don't think anybody saw that coming, to be honest with you. At least not those out in the media. But folks, Brett Yormark has come in and he's done every single thing he said he's going to do. He said he was going to get a deal done. He got a deal done. 
you know, a lot of people said that the Big 12 should have held out, tried to get more money. If they'd have waited to the end of their contract, there may have been a higher demand. He could have got more money. I think he did the right thing here because what he did, he he went out and he sacrificed, they sacrificed a little bit of money to make sure they got that exposure on linear cable because if he knew, he probably knew, okay, if the Pac-12 gets the deal with ESPN before we do and, and Fox before we do, there's not going to be as much room left for the Big 12 on these networks. And we may get stuck doing business with the streaming service and we may get less exposure. And Brett Yormark's a marketing and branding guy. Exposure is important. Exposure is important for marketing and branding. If you want to rebrand the league, which he said he's wanting to do, if you want to get your team's exposure, if you want to be younger, hip, or cooler, then you've got to be seen. You have to be on television. You have to have your games on TV. You have to have people watching it. And in the Big 12, let's face it, folks, there's probably a lot of lower-income households out there that want to watch their teams play, and they may not can afford Amazon. They may not can afford to subscribe to ESPN+. Plus. So, And Brent Yormark is smart enough to realize that. So he jumped in line, got in front of the Pac-12, got that ESPN and Fox deal done, and now there's not enough room on all these networks for any more college football. So it's leaving left the Pac-12 kind of hanging out to dry, and now they have to rely on these streaming services, and they're not going to get as much exposure, which is going to hurt their brand and the, and the individual schools, the brands of the individual schools in the conference. So George Klyovkov has once again stepped in it. He's overpromised his league members he's struggling to get a deal done now at the end of the day i'm not i still don't think the pac-12 will implode and, and end up falling apart but i'm telling you folks the longer this thing goes the higher the risk is that that'll happen i still think cooler has a prevail i think these pac-12 schools want to stay together i think they'll end up going out and adding a couple more group of five schools maybe a san diego state maybe an smu maybe somebody else to in, in order to stay together and get extra inventory. And they're, pro and they're probably going to have to give up some exposure on linear cable to get games on Amazon or, or another streaming service. I think it's the only option. Now, for them, if you look at it on the bright side, I mentioned the, the Big 12 and having a lot of low-income households probably in, in, based on where they are in the country. You could also say the same, the opposite for the Pac-12. They're out, you know, you've got Colorado, probably Phoenix, you know, if you add San Diego State, you've got San Diego. You could add Dallas-Fort Worth if you add SMU. You've got, you know, Seattle-Washington. You've probably got some markets in the in the Pac-12 where you've got more affluent families, more uh, well-to-do, so to speak, financially families that might be able to afford to buy these streaming services. But the, but the problem is, are these fan bases going to be passionate enough to do that? Do the fan bases in the Pac-12, obviously, you know, Oregon and Washington fans probably will. Overall, the league as a whole, the Pac-12 as a whole, will they be able to move the needle from a fan base perspective to actually get people to subscribe to these streaming services? It's yet to be seen, but we're going to find out because it looks like that's the path that George Klyovkov and the Big 12 is heading down. I want to hear your thoughts in the comment section. If you're a Pac-12 fan out there, are you worried – are you worried now? Does this make you? Does this article concern you? Are you concerned that George Klyovkov is running this conference off a cliff? And are you concerned about not having a media deal done yet? If you're a Big Twelve fan, do you think this continues to strengthen our position? And do you ultimately think we will end up adding some teams out of the Pac-12 when it's all said and done? I want to hear your thoughts. Don't forget, guys, you can support my channel here financially. Check out the link in my description box to purchase hoodies, ball caps, T-shirts. All kinds of different products I have over there, coffee mugs. You can hit check out the Fanatics link in my description box to get your favorite Fanatics apparel. That link will get you into the site. You don't have to buy the item that pops up, which will be a custom NIO West Virginia jersey. But all it does is but you can just search for whatever you need once you get on there, buy whatever you want, get you apparel from your favorite team, and in the same at the same time help out my channel here at Kuz's Corner. If you don't want to support me financially, you can also support me for absolutely free in a, four different ways. You can like this video, share the video with your friends. Drop that comment below, and last but not least, subscribe to the channel here. Help me get up to that 5,000 subscriber mark, which is a, a big deal for us YouTube content creators. And, oh, by the way, I forgot, there's a heart thanks option right below the video. You can hit that, make a one-time donation. 
no matter how big, how small you want to make it, leave a comment to go with it and show your appreciation for what I'm doing here if you think it's worthwhile and you enjoy the content. With that being said, I really appreciate you tuning into this episode. And until the next one, Q Country Roads.